he's better than Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao would do it like that. Jeff is good. He looks like a fucking pop star. Oh, wait till he get on these motherfuckers. The most efficient hunting Ooh. machine in all of boxing. He's vicious. A monster. Terence Crawford is the undisputed number one in the pound for pound rankings, and rightfully so. However, in the coming months, absolute monster from Japan, Naoya Inoue, might give him a run for his money. Right now, Inoue is vying for the title of the strongest boxer regardless of weight division, just like Crawford. Inoue is on the brink of becoming a two division world champion and for over 10 years he has been building his path to the top through the knockouts of his opponents. Friends, today's video will be dedicated to the top 5 fights in Naoya Inoue's career. Please don't forget to like and leave a comment with four words and also subscribe to never miss new videos. And we're starting, let's go! Number 5. Omar Navaez Japanese fighters are natural born warriors willing to make any sacrifice for victory. It's no wonder that they often become exceptional athletes including impressive boxers. Despite this, there have always been very few widely recognizable Japanese boxers, but Kaibutsu was called from the depths to change that. Naoya's future champion upbringing was always overseen by his father who guided him through a successful amateur career before turning professional. The young prospect's first fight took place in 2012 and he knocked out his opponent in the fourth round. A knockout victory in his debut might not seem extraordinary at first glance, but this finish was just one of many to come. Over the next two years, he secured seven victories, six of them by knockout, competing in the light fly division. Inoue displayed unimaginable power for his weight class, but he had no intention of lingering there. As soon as the opportunity arose, he moved up and accepted the challenge of WBO champion Omar Navaez. By the time of their meeting, Navaez had been considered one of the top boxers in the division for several years, successfully defending his title 11 times. At the time of facing the prospect, Navaez was almost 40 while Naoya had just turned 21. However, the old wolf wasn't about to yield his place to the young predator. In that bout, Inoue looked like a perfect weapon. He moved around the ring with astonishing ease, outpacing his opponent in every action. Yet the young fighter's punches were so impactful that a direct hit to the guard was enough for a knockout. When the referee approached Navaez, it was clear that he was in complete shock. He seemed to not even understand why he fell. Meanwhile, Inoue continued his relentless pressure and knocked down his opponent again, this time with a hook. Inoue did nothing extraordinary, but his punches were endowed with an abnormal amount of power. By the end of the round, the champion barely emerged from his defense while the Japanese fighter relentlessly pressed on, throwing sharp spear-like jabs. Finally, the long-awaited bell rang and the fighters went to their corners. Upon returning, they finished the job. <laughs> Navaez attempted a counter-attack, but it faltered when Kaibutsu delivered a left hook, followed by a left punch to the body. After enduring three knockouts from headshots, Omar couldn't bear the excruciating pain and was defeated. Inoue royally claimed his first significant title in his career. Number 4. Emmanuel Rodriguez In the super flyweight division, Inoue spent only three years securing eight victories. However, besides capturing the sole WBO title, he couldn't quite contend for titles in other divisions. He then made the decision to try his luck in the third weight class. In the weight class up to 118 pounds, the relative of Saitama from One Punch Man tradition immediately landed a title fight. In just one darn round, he devoured the British champion with six defenses. 
Normally with a change in weight classes, knockout artists lose some of their power, but Naoya seemed to finally find where he truly belonged. By the way, Inui didn't move to this weight class just for no reason. Shortly before that, it was known that bantamweight division champions would participate in the global boxing series competing for the title of the best representative of their category, the Muhammad Ali Trophy and some green. Only three weight categories were involved in the global series, so moving up to bantamweight was the right decision. In the quarterfinals, Kaibutsu faced the sturdy Dominican Carlos Payano, who was a former champion just a couple of fights ago but relinquished his belts. It took Inoue 70 seconds to knock out the guy from the number two ranking. While fans were still processing what they had seen, Naoya was already preparing to shock everyone in the semi-finals where he would take on the undefeated Puerto Rican IBF champion, Emmanuel Rodriguez. I, I see it as something, a, a big stepping stone for me for my future career in boxing. Yes, of course, this is a unification fight and I, I'm looking at this as the toughest fight I've had so far. Uh, of course, I look for the, the knockout, but Rodriguez is a great fighter. And so as the fight goes on, if the, the knockout is there, I'll, I'll, I'll go for it. But otherwise, um, he, he is a great fighter and I'm expecting a great match. The two fighters immediately started exchanging blows as if they were in a middleweight bout. Both demonstrated supersonic speeds and frequently connected. The entire first segment was a competitive shootout with Rodriguez gaining a slight lead. He managed to take the initiative and land short combinations on the Japanese fighter, weathering the counterattacks. It seemed like Manny wasn't afraid of Inui's acclaimed power and was even willing to engage in an all-out brawl if needed. After an intense first three minutes, Rodriguez entered the second round brimming with confidence, and that's when it began. A fearsome flurry, and he's done it. He's got him with a left for the first time in his career. A left hook, and Emmanuel was down right away. The Puerto Rican didn't even understand how it happened and was only about to recover when excruciating pain from body shots pierced through him. Oh, this is unbelievable for anybody. In the first round, Kaibutsu had already softened up his opponent and now he was reaping the rewards. Despite the pain and his legs failing him, the champion swayed toward the ropes where he was caught and finished in a spectacular fashion. Inoue became a double champion and advanced to the final. Well, I guess everybody thinks of that of, of my fight uh, as far as uh, being short. But uh, in the first round in Glasgow, it was a, a different environment for me a little. And, um, it, it, and it, it was basically a, a round that I had to make some adjustments. And in the second round, after making that adjustment, um, I, I think I was able to perform better. And, and of course, I got the victory. Number three, Paul Butler. In the aftermath, Naoya emerged victorious in the boxing series. But the super veteran who had been competing for so long that he witnessed the dinosaurs managed not only to survive a full 12 rounds, but also gave the Japanese monster a very tough fight, claiming three to four rounds. At this point, some bantamweight division boxers took heart. They began to think that this guy had weaknesses they could exploit. However, Naoya seemingly mocking them effortlessly knocked out the next four opponents. The entire weight class sank back into mourning, realizing they had no chance against this living tsunami. Fortunately, Kaibutsu was already planning to change weight classes, but before that, he aimed to become an undisputed champion. After his victory in the Global Boxing Series, he held three belts, lacking only the WBO title, which eluded British boxer Paul Butler. The baby-faced assassin had secured the gold just in his previous fight with a winning streak of eight bouts. The last time Paul lost was to none other than Emmanuel Rodriguez, who fell to the hands of the samurai in just two rounds. While Rodriguez might not have been the best of the best, what could other bantamweight boxers do when Naoya had already dealt with everyone else? No, I think I think the fight the fight should happen next. Um, I think it could happen next. Uh, as he said at the end there, he said uh, he wants undisputed or he'll move up the weight by the end of the year. Yeah, of course. Um, I've been in boxing a long time now, and he always wanted to be a world champion, and he always wanted to to unify a division, maybe hold two belts. But would you travel over to Japan to face him? 
Ping trying not to get caught while the champion ruthlessly targeted his body. In the first six rounds, Naoya showcased his entire arsenal on his opponent, but later he lowered his guard and eased up. Butler repeatedly attempted to survive. In the 11th round, Kaibutsu had had enough and he exploded. Expect the presence. Number 2. Nonito Donaire 2 Between his victory in the Global Boxing Series and winning his fourth belt in the bantamweight division, Inoue fought a bout that was perhaps the most significant for him personally. I previously mentioned that during the pinnacle of his stardom in the Global Series, Naoya clashed with the rugged veteran Nonito Donaire and took a significant beating. However, I intentionally omitted that they would soon have a crucial rematch. Three years had passed since their first encounter, during which many events occurred, including the coronavirus pandemic, which hindered boxers from competing frequently. The second match between the two was originally planned to be held earlier, as there was intrigue, but the virus once again disrupted their plans. Over the intervening time, the boxers accumulated a common. Nonito managed to obtain the WBC title, which was essential for Naoya, as he aspired to become an undisputed champion. The rematch was scheduled to take place in Japan at the Saitama Super Arena. No, I think it's very exciting uh, because I know the guy in front of me is a tremendous fighter, so it's very fun. The last time I had so much fun in the fight, and we're going to have a lot of fun in this fight. Uh, this fight means a lot to me. Very, very motivated. This is a fight that pretty much I've been aiming for to accomplish everything that I have not accomplished in boxing. I've done everything in boxing, accomplished everything in boxing, except for become undisputed. And this is the road to the In the first fight, Nonito precisely countered Inui's attack, and Kai Butsu took note of that. This time he didn't rush in, but engaged in exchanges of jabs and set up the exchanges. The Filipino aimed to create distance, but Naoya met him with a series of left hooks and a heavy straight right. The champion struck. In a seemingly effortless manner, the monster delivered a perfect knockdown in the very first round. Donaire managed to continue, but he was in constant danger. Just when it seemed that the intensity of the fight had slightly subsided, Inoue shook his opponent. With wobbly legs, Donaire tried to escape but the incredibly focused monster corner Stephen Fulton. Inui triumphed over all the main bosses of his division and claimed the ultimate rewards, leaving no barriers to his continued journey of conquering another weight category. Especially since the boxer himself had been talking about it even before the Butler fight, this time the Japanese artilleryman's target was the super bantamweight division populated by taller and more powerful opponents. But does the monster strike you as someone who shies away from such challenges? As you understand, with a weight class change, there's no room for an easy fight, nor would Inoue want one. Therefore, his debut in this new category was immediately set against perhaps the most significant threat possible. Stephen Fulton, the towering American, held a record of 21-0 along with the WBC and WBO titles making a fight with him a shortcut to a new undisputed championship. Yes, with this move to the new weight class, Naoya was planning to capture all four titles right there. If it weren't for Crawford moving up shortly after this, Inui would have become the first to achieve this feat in the era of four belts. However, Bud outdid himself and now Inui can only be the second. Prior to the bout, Fulton's team heavily emphasized how Inui tapes his hands. They insisted that he do it the way it's done in the USA, and as a result, Naoya slightly altered his usual hand wrapping. It all seemed as though Cool Guy Steve's team was already seeking justification in case of his defeat. That's why I say I'm an all-around fighter. Like, when, and, and, like as a basketball, you have you have the athletic build, you have score slasher, or you have all-around. I'm all-around. He's more so the athletic build, for as the for the known for the knockout. So I feel, I feel like we have a guy that's known for knockouts. They tend to feel comfortable with that and they look for that. When you have an all-around fighter, you you could do whatever. And, and that's a dangerous fighter to deal with. And of course I have the power as well. Fulton fought in a wide stance that added to his already substantial reach advantage, but it didn't help. 
Through his speed and footwork, Inoue read all of Fulton's attacks, won the jab exchanges and then fed Fulton a barrage of straights that left the American nowhere to hide. His guard offered no defense against Inoue's infernal power. In the 8th round, the Japanese fighter landed a virtuistic 1-2 that went through Fulton's guard and deceived him, resulting in a knockdown. The monstrous sound of Naoya's right straight echoed throughout the arena. Steven continued to fight, but he couldn't make a comeback and tasted the most powerful punches of his life, ultimately getting knocked out. all the belts and become a super phantom weight. Everything I was thinking about all in mind was to fight against him in this year. However, unfortunately, I got injury and I had to postpone this fight. I am sorry for my team, my t uh, Photons team, but thank you so much for accepting this fight once again and I'm so happy right now. Right now, Inoue stands as one of the best boxers in the world. He possesses everything and more to be deemed a perfect champion and for now, time is not his master. I believe that within the next year or two, he can become an undisputed champion in the super bantamweight division because currently, I don't see a boxer who could be given better odds against Inoue than himself. It's all heading toward the inevitable that only time will defeat the great monster. What are your thoughts on this? Who do you think could defeat Naoya Inui right now? Share your opinions in the comments.